at uh, automatic weather stations, automatic data import management, uh, so that uh, you see how you can set your uh, claims of importing data automatically. So I started explaining this uh, uh, yes. by a picture on uh, how how it works. I think this is uh, uh, it's Bafana. Uh, you may have to mute your your camera and video. Uh, it's good that Bafana has come because we are looking for people from Eswatini. Welcome, Bafana. But you need to mute your your video and the camera. So now this exercise of uh, configuring Creamsoft to do, do the uh, automatic weather station data import automatically is configure. Uh, there's a lot of uh, settings that we do. But let's see exactly what happens. I, I want to open a, a small diagram on, on how, how the whole configuration works. So just look at that one. I explain in a minute. Okay, now I'm putting the Creamsoft uh, server there at the, at, the, at the middle. This is a server where you install the Creamsoft. That's where the database is. And in case you are working in a network environment where you have got some other desktop connected to the server, uh, the desktop may not have the database, but they can just have the Creamsoft interface. That means you don't install MariaDB on the on the on the desktop you just store it in the server uh, this the importing of the automatic same data in this case uh, it will be done from the server so we'll have the cream soft installed as, as the server where the database is and we do the settings to make to give information to Creamsoft about the other systems that are handling this, this, this data. To start with, the, there, there are two other servers that you may have to configure. Uh, the first one is the one that is uh, holding the uh, AWS data. That means you have a server which we define as a base stations connected to many sites that are bringing data. And you could have a number of them. Each of them, you can configure them individually in Creamsoft. Uh, these servers uh, for AWS, uh, they depend on the provider of that AWS system. In one country, you may find that you have about uh, three different uh, AWS uh, uh, system providers. Each of them, they have their base station, which collects data from different sites. So the Creamsoft 
will connect to each of them, but you have to configure that uh, information or about each of the server. And for every server that is going to be connected Climsoft, so that the Climsoft can pull data automatically from it, you have to configure what you call FTP server. FTP server is an application that you can configure. It comes with the Windows, but it's not configured uh, when you store the Windows. So you have to do the configuration so that the that server has what you call the F, runs what you call the FTP service. And this FTP service, sometimes the process of pulling the data, it may be interfered by the firewall. You still have to allow the firewall to, you still have to configure the firewall to allow that. Uh, the configuration of the FTP service in a server, uh, there are, so ma there are so many manuals because they depend on each operating system. But when you go to the internet, you can always download one. If you search for the, let's say, if you're using, the, if the server is, if the, maybe the particular AWS server is running maybe a Windows, a Windows 10, you can just download the, the document on the Windows 10 FTP configuration and you'll be able to, to have it. If the AWS server is running on a system like Linux, that one is simple because the Linux, uh, the FTP is automatic. The moment you saw the Linux on a, on a, in a computer, FTP server is, config, is already up and running, but Windows, you will still have to configure it through what you call the internet uh, information service. Uh, this uh, server that's uh, collecting data from uh, AWS from the site, this server is provided by the, the uh, it comes from the provider who, who brought the AWSs, although sometimes the, the main service may have their own server. Usually, they have a database that is stored that this uh, this data, and the, the most the most one I've seen they've got a database called the uh, SQL, uh, and it's configurable. You can configure that that that, uh, that uh, database to be out to output data into files. Uh, and what teams of requires is that uh, the, the data is received from, from, from the site and go to that database, we, we get a, an automatic export from that, uh, from that system. So that uh, if it's collecting data, maybe after every one hour, it also pulls those files after every one hour. Now the team soft will, will pull that file automatically and do the processing. So that's where the, the different uh, AWS uh, base station differs. Some you may have to configure, some they're only configured by the provider, and some are very difficult because uh, the provider did not give uh, the users access to the database, so you cannot be able to configure, and sometimes you may have to call them. Because it's for Crimsoft to work with it, it must be able to export the data that's coming from the site into files uh, automatically. So all that information uh, you will configure in the Crimsoft on what on what we are going to see, how you configure that uh, information about that details about that server, and also about the sites on that server. So the moment uh, the configuration is done, you set the themes of to be putting data from that server at a particular intervals of time. And the most, uh, the best, uh, the suitable intervals of time is, uh, is the same interval at which, at which the, the AWS server is making those files available. Although themes of you can set at a, at a bigger interval of time so that it will be collecting all whatever has been, uh, uh, has been uh, received. Uh, then uh, 
that, that data will be going to the, whenever it is pulled, it will go to the CleanSoft database and it will go to the, what we call the, the table we call observation final. The QC is done automatically and the data that has got uh, QC issues is put aside on a, in a certain file and it will be able to, you'll be able to look at that file and decide what to do. So if you accept that data, now you have to take it manually into the CleanSoft and it will go through the observation in issue and you do the QC again and then you can put it to final. In case uh, you want the CleanSoft to set that up to GTS, you will have to configure the details of the message switch server that connect to the GTS so that the cream soft will be sending that the will be that data apart from putting it in the in the database it also do some uh, message encoding and sends it to the message switch either the local message switch or the message at the hub that means uh, let's say a country like uh, Eswatini their hub is the GTS hub is in Pretoria so they may decide that uh, data may go fast through their local message switch if they have one, or they may have to send it directly to, to the message switch at the hub, that is at the pre at Pretoria. That means the Pretoria message switch, switch managers, they have to provide the details to the, uh, to the SWAT team and the they configure CreamSoft so that the CreamSoft can push directly to there. So from there, it's upon the message to at the hub to put that uh, messages to GTS. So generally, that's uh, that's how it works in a picture form. And uh, from there, I may go to the details. But what I need to also to tell that uh, when you are doing the configuration for every site, the data make. Uh, or, or a group, group of sites that come from one provider, you may find that data is coming in a certain structure. Uh, and when you have another provider, the data files, you have data in a different structure. So those structures will be configured and stored in the CleanSoft so that when it's processing that data, it will reading, it, it reading the, the structure so that it can be able to map data in the right, uh, in the right fields in CleanSoft. Uh, the configuring of the structure of the data is, is almost the same to what we are doing in uh, manual import, where you are making the header specifications. Although now this one is done in a table. There is a table, and that information will be stored in a table. That CleanSoft will be reading it. This site has got this uh, data structure. So these columns from this data will be yeah, will be having this uh, this meaning that this column represent what. So I don't know whether there's any any question at this point before I go to demonstrating how it is done. Any question? <clears throat> so uh, now I just want to show you how things uh, where things are configured um, in CreamSoft. Let me start from the the CreamSoft, uh, not from the test database, from the. one that is blank that is a mean so through the cream soft there is this icon it in aws real-time processing 
when I open this icon, I have this uh, dialogue. We just got uh, uh, several buttons. There's processing, there's a servers, there are sites, data structures, and encoding options. I don't know whether I've configured anything on this um, sites. Not uh, yeah, this one. So it will be good for processing. So. I'll start with the, the first uh, button on processing. It's about now what we are seeing here. If you even on, on another settings, and you click on the processing, you go back here. So this is the, like the, the control panel on this, and it, it, it gives the information on what is happening. Uh, the first two buttons, restart and stop, is uh, indicate the status and you can also change the status when you are doing a configuration you stop the process and when you are what continue restart so when the button of the restart is uh, is checked uh, that means it uh, it will start uh, processing in it starts it will start working and it will be retrieving uh, data from the base station server at the intervals indicated there we shall put it in minutes so that uh, you can go to as slow as one minute this is not the minute of the of the observation intervals is the interval at which the climsoft will be logging into the base station server and look for new for new data uh, so in most cases uh, we the logging is is uh, is that is the 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 logging there is done every one hour to look for the new data. If you set it to be to be doing at every one hour, you shall put uh, sixty minutes. Uh, but uh, we may we can't assume that uh, if data from that given server is being downloaded into the, is being pulled by that by that server from the site every one hour, it may not happen that uh, all the data may have arrived at the hour. Some comes a bit later. So it's a matter of, uh, for you to know how long, how uh, the delay in that. Then you can set some minutes uh, of, of the hour. You can see maybe you, if you know that all the data is able to come from the site within the 10 minutes of the hour, you can set that the Climsoft, although the data is being pulled every one hour, uh, so there could be some delay. So even at the hour, <coughs> you have some delay with this minute. So like here, the default is 10 minutes, but you can just adjust it accordingly. Maybe the data comes after the, uh, it may take even as much as 20 minutes to get all data from all the sites. So, so that that data may not left behind. So at the hour, the cream sort will wait for about the time given there, those 10 minutes, and then it will, it will log and start pulling the files to see whether it's new data. But you can also extract the cream soft that uh, when it goes there, when it's logs in, it may decide to look for data as old as two hours because uh, even uh, maybe even after setting a, an offset of 10 minutes some some sites due maybe due to co uh, connectivity problems uh, they may still not have come there so you may say that anytime i log into that server i look for data as old as two hours so in case the some other data were missed in the previous uh, retrieval. Uh, but sometimes there might be a problem and the system is down. And when it's up, uh, you're not even sure how, uh, where you stopped or which data has not been uh, retrieved. So when you are, you are sure, you can tell claims of to look for everything. And if there's new data, it updates its database. 
but if data that has uh, done before, that when nothing happens. So that time we put a triple nine. This tells the clean software that when you go to that uh, server, look for all the data. Doesn't matter which hour. So whatever is available, uh, put it, and then you, the cream talk, we, ch we check out what, which one was not uh, received. But at default, you should set at two hours, but you can, you can do the, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, set it yourself. If you think sometimes the data comes even many hours late, like there's some we are calling when you came there and found it was coming as late as six hours. You may change this setting that data when it's logged to that server, it can look for data as well as six hours. And, the, and this, when I say two for last, this last hour is, is those are the hours uh, uh, computed from the current time. Now, from now, I check for data that is six hours old from now. So that's what it means. And whenever you do changes, you, you make sure you save them. Then the next but the next uh, button is about the the timeout period. This is uh, uh, we are we tell the cream soft that uh, if you try to lock that server and you're not getting connections, you may not, uh, because there could be some connection failure or the, 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 the connectivity may be very slow because this server may be even far away, maybe it's even uh, in a wide area network. And you are unable, Creamsoft is unable to connect. It can, uh, it can try, and, uh, and if it doesn't work, then it can uh, uh, go to an, another site or rather try to log in for another site. In that case, uh, you give it a, a time that it can try. So this, that maybe after 20 seconds, that network might, be, might not be able to connect. And since I've got so many files to, to process, it may not just keep on trying to, to connect. So we should give it give a, a timeout at which uh, it can wait. But if you have no problem, you want it to keep trying, you should put a, a, a 3.9. And this one, it, it will keep on trying until it gets through. But uh, by default, we give it 20 seconds. Then the other button is about the file that you have processed from the from the base station. Probably, probably after it has been processed, uh, you may want to remove it so that uh, next time data comes from in that base station, you have uh, a smaller file because the bigger the files are, the longer it takes to pull that file. So for data that you have processed, you can. Uh, decide to, uh, to delete from that file. But that one is, is, we are talking of the file that is, let me show you, the file that is already in the other, in the other server, not in the Crimson server. Uh, and most users, they are not very comfortable with that one because they think that uh, when you kill that file from that uh, server, I want to open the diagram again. When you, because that deleting, you are removing the file from this server, the one that was generated by the automatic weather station server. Because what they do, the file that has got data, they keep adding data on it. Any new data is added on that file. So the file ended up being quite big. You may decide to delete it after being after, after processing. And if that's what you want to do, uh, this box is marked. By default, it's not marked, but uh, if you want to be deleting them, uh, most of the users are not comfortable with that. I've not seen one uh, doing that. So it's fun. So after, even after 
after pulling the data, the file in the, in the AW server is still, is still left in the same, uh, in the, in the same data that has been processed. But you can delete it if you want. If you mark this one, it will be deleted. Then the other one is uh, G GTM differences. The data that is in, the, in that AWS uh, system, the, the it's time. If it's different from, uh, if it's not the same as GTS, no, it's not as a GMT, and you are doing you are doing a data encoding. That means. Uh, you have configured uh, for this process of encoding for GTS. In, GT in, in GTS, data goes uh, in the UTC. So you, it need to be converted that you must write the difference, negative or plus, but plus you don't like, the, you don't like that one. So those are the configurations that you do for how the data will be retrieved, how do you be processed. Then below is information on what's going on. It will show you from which server is pulling the data and where data has been uh, sent, especially if it's going to the, to the message switch. And then uh, the other one is the status. You have the, the clock time, so be knowing what time you are. And then the, it will be indicating the last, the last data was processed. And the, and the last time it was processed, and the, the next time it is expected to process, that is when it's on the, on the restart mode and then uh, the status of process now is it is uh, it is stopped so th this one works when everything else has been configured and the first configurations is on the servers the the two servers i'm talking about the aw server and the message switch server this one is not uh, mandatory uh, because probably you don't want to be setting that data to GTS, but uh, it may be necessary if you want to do that. Uh, so I will start by looking at uh, what you configure in, in each of the server. Um, we go through the same, so we see the server configurations. So when you get that uh, dialog, you can set the base station server and the miss switch switching server. For the base station server, um, here you have as many as, as you have uh, connected to a clean soft. That's why you show me uh, showing the, uh, the dots. You can have as many. And each of them you add here. You put the, the configuration, that's the IP address. Uh, in that server, the folder where the, the CleanSoft you set, the, the CleanSoft you put in data flow, the mode of transfer, uh, CleanSoft using FTP, although sometimes they can use the SFTP depending whether the, the server does not allow FTP. Then you have to get the details of that server, that is the username, the password, and you confirm so that you configure them correctly. So this is the detail that came up you be using to log in that server. So you configure as many as you have. Uh, then in case you want to be setting that to, to GTS, you also configure the message switch, the same configuration. And uh, that says the IP address, the the folder where to be putting the method of transfer the username and the password mm, teams of uses uh, what call the message message go to dps teams of using the buffer it's called encoding what called buffer which is a binary message so at the message switch they usually have uh, different folders where you put the binary or alphanumeric, uh, alphanumeric uh, um, uh, files. Most of the data that is called cream of the spy, this AWS uh, goes, goes as binary, if we call buffer. But uh, we, we have one that goes as, as uh, alphanumeric, that's climate message. 
so that uh, when you are configuring for that one, you also need to, to go a different folder at the message switch. But now you, when you configure it, it will, you choose the ask. Okay, this is a new addition. Uh, uh, the older versions may not have this component because uh, most of the system that we have configured, they are using a uh, buffer, but uh, we encountered one case in Shwachini. Uh, they need to set some data in uh, ask. So we are accommodated for, uh, for having a folder for that. So that's about the servers. About the sites now, where the data is coming from, we need to, we need to see the details of the site the site ID, the name, the files that contain data for that from the base station. And if that data has got a missing data flag and the IP for the server that is connected. So any server that you configure to appear here. And then if it's going to GTS, we shall mark the, this box. If it's not going, we leave it at, at that. So here we configure all the sites, whether they are from different servers, but when you'll be indicating, you'll be indicating at which server is connected. That means among the servers that you may have, we'll be having three, each of them with many sites, but the sites you configure each one at a time and indicating on which server is connected to. Then, uh, on different sites, you have different uh, data structures. You'll uh, go to configure the, the different structures or that you have. I may just mention like uh, one here. Mm. Mm. Okay, this is an example of one uh, structure. This is a table that you create here and you mention each and every column. So every column of the data is defined here. We are going to see that uh, practically. And then uh, the detail that you want is the, you try to get an, an abbreviation for that, for that column, that is the title, and you give it a name. And then you need to know what uh, data it contains so that data of the flat column, you, you allocate the CleanSoft element code for each column. So like this one uh, has got 14 columns. And uh, in a column that you don't, don't, want to, don't want to import because you may be having some columns that are not necessary, you usually leave it blank. And uh, there's another configuration on the limits. So for each column, represent a data for a given element. Let's say like this column, represent uh, data for which direction. So we have the limits here. Then the lower limit is zero and the upper limit is 360. So when you get data for width that is less than, less than zero or more greater than 360, it will not be taken into CleanSoft, but it will be put aside. So this is uh, where you configure the, the, the limits that we'll be checking the data for. And uh, if there's no limit, that data will go through, whether it's got a, an a, a loss or not. So I just want to go through the settings so that I go them to, into details. Then if you want data to go to GTS, you may have to provide some information, like the header for that uh, message. Message goes with the headers. There's what we call encoding templates. For binary, there's template provided by WMO for different encoding methods. So by default, we give this one for what for, is for CNOP. Uh, for the whole global, but you can choose particular for different regions, but uh, in default, you give this one. There are some of these that you have to get from the GTS manuals, like the number for that, for the center that is generating the, the message. I know like Nairobi is 0014. Uh, 
I think it's five digits. Each, each center has got a number. There's a, there's a table of WMO called the uh, uh, communication uh, 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 parameters. Which I can uh, you can I can show I can show you or you can download it. So uh, it may not uh, it may look a bit complicated, but it's not a lot complicated. We are going to see practically how it is done, and then we are going to first of all look at certain site that is of certain uh, center that is operating. I want to look at uh, Eswatini and the Kenya Meteorological Department because this, they are among the med service that are, are running this process. I know what they does are sometimes. The other center is doing, the other centers are doing like uh, uh, Mozambique. Another one is uh, Namibia. And I think we recently we connected the Shwatini. So I don't know whether there is any question or mm -hmm. we have, uh, we have a break. It is now load seven seven thirty. It's a miss pass. It's, I got my oh, uh, time is seven forty five. So we had to pass the break. Can we have a break and we resume at? Uh, quarter past eight so that uh, we, we look at it uh, practically. Okay, John Mungai can take your question. No, uh, it depends. It was uh, when you're explaining about the setting for the servers and there was the local host. So I wanted you to clarify to the participants that the if it is localhost, it means you are configuring it on the same machine as the whatever. Uh, if it is another machine which is the AWS base station, that put the IP address for that uh, base station. Yeah, uh, that came guy. I was. Uh, it was only that is. It was uh, on my computer. There was uh, uh, showing what is just. Uh, I use it for testing, but in the actual in the actual configuration, like, like this being the the Kenya Meteorological Department. Okay, they also have the local host because the the data is within really the same server. For them, the for KMD data comes in the in the it's in the same server, but for Eswatini, it will be a bit different. This is a KMD configuration. They have the local host. That means the uh, that means this uh, AWS server is already is is only in their server. So that means the data is coming straight to the server. That means uh, whatever whatever database is put for this is already inside the the server. So the for this case the for the case of KMD. The AW server at the Kim server is one computer. Uh, because you can also put you can put the Kim soft on this server if you are the one who owns it. So that's why it's different for KK for KMD. So if if this AW server is, is in the same is it's in the is the same server, the Kim soft server, that's the same that that means you are using the safe server. So the base station is the is the local server. But you see like for KMD now the message switch is a different one. It's not the local host. This IP for the for the hub. Fortunately the Nairobi is a hub. So they they put the data directly uh, into the into the hub. Otherwise, some countries we have got their local switch that now connect to the uh, to the switch at the hub. For example, like uh, uh, Mozambique, they had uh, the local switch, and now that switch now connect to the switch at the Pretoria. So for their cream soft, just connect to the local switch. 
Uh, uh, so that's what uh, John Guy was saying. Local horses mean that the, the base station is the same as the creams of server. They are using the same, the, the same, the same system. But when you look at uh, a short I think it will be a bit different. Uh, uh, it may look a bit complicated, but there's uh, here we got elaborate notes. I'm going to, to show you the chapter on the manual that you, you refer to. Uh, so now we are in, in a break, and we are going to zoom at quarter past uh, eight uh, uh, GMT. And we are going to see how we can configure even if one site. So, a short team, is there anybody from a short team? I got a soup bafana. Hello, Samuel. Bafana, you may have to send us your team viewer connect, uh, connection so that we can uh, look at your server. You want to use it as a demonstration. Will that be possible? Hello, Simon. Hello, Bafana. Hello. Hello. No, this is Menzi. This it's Menzi. Oh, it's, oh, it's Menzi. It's a connection that is written with yes, Bafana. So, will you be able oh. to give us a team viewer connection so that uh, we can uh, use your your AWS connection as a as a, as a, for demonstration. Okay, I'm forwarding it now, just now. I just want me, I'll keep it so that after after break, we shall look at it. Okay, we are still on break. Okay, so I'm sending it just now. Hello, Samuel. Yeah, I've seen the, I've seen the ID. I hope it's the same like yesterday. I, I, I've been forwarded the, the password. Please try and log in now and see if it's working. Uh, let me try again. Because, uh, it has showed the it has showed that one. We are on break and we are oh. singing at quarter past. Hello, Simon. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Let me try again. Uh, 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 let me try again. The first time it has failed. Yeah, please, please try the last password. Yeah, that's the one I'm trying.
Samuel, there is a new password here. Please start with P. Yes, not the one with one. Okay. Hey, Samuel, please use the last password. It's like I'm still using the one the J9. Hello, Samuel. Means it is working now. Can see Samuel is in. Yes, he's now in. But the challenge is it's like it is frozen now. That's the that's the main challenge you're having. For you to run it, you have to stop it first. Because when it's on restart, you cannot do anything. That's the challenge yes. we're facing. Yes. It is working in the background. Yes, it is working.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, welcome back. So we want to continue with what I've demonstrated. I just uh, went over the whole process, uh, touching uh, just on uh, slightly on some areas, but uh, the best thing for it to, uh, to see it is to, to understand what I talked about to see it practically. So, and I want to connect to to this where to where things are working. I want to use both the Kenya Meteorological, Kenya Meteorological uh, Department, Kilimsoft installation, and also the Eshwatini Met Service is Kilimsoft installation. So, uh, Menzi. Uh, uh, yes, Samuel. You may have just to stop Creamsoft for 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 demonstration. Okay. Just just kill it. Okay, Samuel. We are going to to resume the process later. Okay, thank you. So now mm -hmm. you just start, just start CleanSoft and they don't uh, just start CleanSoft and the login and they don't uh, we don't restart the process so that we go through the configuration. Okay, just there. Okay, now. For the participant now i'm going to share the the connection that uh, is watini and then uh, we shall also share the connection at kenya meteorological department and see whether we can understand the the set the, the situation so Anybody can see the cream soft uh, running on uh, on a uh, black background. Masrin, you can see you can see that. So yes, you can please. see everybody else can see. So this is the cream soft running at uh, Eswatini, uh, and I want to demonstrate the video stages that I went through now practically. Uh, we look at the the AWS uh, server details. Then we can understand a bit on how it's working. So I go back to the same icon. I go now to I can see. Okay, we have stopped the process for the sake of uh, demonstration, and you can see they have set it uh, to, to to be to be retrieving data at 60 minutes and a delay of five minutes only. That means the, the data comes uh, very fast. Uh, within five minutes, they have got everything. At the time, when they log into the AW server, they check for the last two data 
audience uh, two hours uh, from the from the current time. They have set the timeout period to 40 seconds and then they put the GTS uh, difference to two hours. So uh, in this uh, screen, if you have got a, a, an error message, it will be shown uh, on that box written uh, error messages. So maybe there's no connection or a certain file from a certain site has not been located. You get that information there. So going to see how the servers have been configured. Uh, we see they have uh, FTP address for this server and they want to log into, into loot folder of that uh, server. But now, what to, what to call the loot folder? Now this is FTP loot folder. When uh, you configure FTP in the server, you, you create the path where will be the root path, the root, uh, the root for the FTP and the, uh, we usually do uh, put that one as where the data files are located. So, Menzi, uh, can you maybe try through the remote desktop, uh, log into this uh, AW server, that is 192, 168, 128, 167. Please come again, Samuel. I'm requesting that uh, through the remote desktop, you let us, uh, you open that server, the AWS server. That's the, it's, it's the logger net, isn't it? Yes, that's the logger net, Samuel. Yeah, can you do the remote desktop? Because we want to see that server, where things are. So just get us to that server. You can use the remote desktop to open that server. Okay, Samuel. Yeah. So we want to see the now the, that server. With this address of 192.168.128.167, because that uh, that's where the that's the AWS server. So we want to see how things are there. Menzi, have you succeeded? Just, uh, just some few seconds, I'm, I'm waiting for Steve, our IT guy, to take control of this. Uh, fellow participants, what we are trying to do is to, to open that server whose uh, IP address is given there, because that is a uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, that IP is for this AWS server, which, which uh, data is being put to, to go to in Crimson. So we want to see, uh, what I want to, to demonstrate there is about the FTP uh, site and the, and the files that are being generated automatically there. So that's where, we are, now we are in, from the Crimson side, we are trying to get here but we are trying to open it through the remote desktop connection. So let's wait for them to be able to open, to open this server and see what is inside.
when they are doing that, let's look at the sites. For the sites, uh, I think they have 20 sites. Uh, you have got the site ID, the site name, and now you have the, the file containing data for this site and located in the folder called the Campbell. So when you go to the to the this station server, we shall be looking for this folder and for this file to see what it contains for this data. And now uh, the other configuration is about the data structure, which I'm going to come there again. And the other thing is the in the server that this site is connected to. It should be the same that we have seen because they have only one server for the AWS sites. That means they have configured only one site, only one base station. So all these other stations, other sites will be connected to that one. So when you go, then there is a box related to the operation. This means uh, you'll be putting, uh, Krims will be putting data for that uh, station. In the case you know that a station is not operating at all, it has failed for some reasons, there's no dreams of looking for it to just to see empty files. You can uh, switch it off by and, and checking that box that the station is currently not, not operational and the cream soft will be skipping it. So the second site is uh, called uh, uh, Council, but, but it's also configured the same. Apart from the what we'll be changing now is the file is the file name for the <coughs> for the, for that data. Hi, Samuel. Ah. Yes. So what do you want us to do on the machine? Can you can you uh, open the the local server? We just want oh, to. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why I told you that uh, you use the remote desktop to open it so that we can, uh, there's something I want to explain there. Oh. What we are trying to do is to open this base station server, the one which has got the address of 192, 168, 128, and 167, so that we can see how the files are, and I can be able to explain about the, 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 the structure of the data. But if it's not possible, you can you can tell us. Uh, I have opened it now on the machine. Should I share the screen? Yeah, share this. Uh, but I should. Oh, what uh, we can give you the time. But, but I'm seeing it uh, from uh, um, from this. Can I do it? Then you, then you, or I do it myself. Yeah, yeah, just do it. Yeah. Okay. Let me look for the remote desktop. I can't see the where to get the. I'm not seeing everything. Yeah. Can you open the icon for from this uh, Creams of Server? Can you open the icon for the remote desktop? Then oh, from the Creams of. Yeah, we want to do it from the Creams of Server. Oh, okay. No, then let's do this. We are doing it from Creams of Server so that everybody can see it. When you did yeah, no, 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 I understand. Yeah, I understand. We won't. We won't uh, so, I still can't see the icon for remote desktop. From Crimsoft server, you're not able to locate the icon for remote desktop. Hello? Uh, let, let, let me try and find it for you. I think it's 
Is it open in what? Mm -hmm. I think uh, you're not doing it right. Uh, this is a this is a Windows application. So from from the Windows, you can you can search for remote desktop. Can you search for the program uh, Windows uh, remote desktop? Why the why the search? Doesn't search. Just write the word remote. It doesn't have the search. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have the search. Mm, what about from the start? What about the start button? From the start, there's no. Can you? Yeah, from the start, you can see this. The start is this this window. Okay, so hmm? what about from the desktop? It takes you back to, but we we were doing it already when we were configuring with you. Mm -mm. I'm looking for the remote desktop on this this one, cool, but I can't find it. Try to search it. Where? Where? Control panel. Please control. On the top right, I'm seeing the window sign. Are you seeing the window sign next to the smiley face? Is At it? the top of your window. Oh, what the? It's not the control panel. Uh, no, in the menu bar up yeah. there. I can see it there in now. The but this is configuration now, not not executing it. Mm -hmm. The world I will start from mm -hmm. the start, you can't find anything. Uh, 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 uh. If you look at the top of your window, can't you see the smiley face? Next to it, there is a window icon and the narrow facing down. I think we could find the menu there. Next to right. that, top right. Yeah, yeah. I can see it now. Let me, yeah. Mm. Type uh, remote. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's there. Yeah. Okay, mm. now type the address. Type the address. Which one? Two, one, 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 two, it's not it's not this one it's made it one two three seven two one and two two exclamation marks Yeah, it's not the one. <laughs> Can you use another account? Okay, I'll try. I'll try if this one fits. Chamber. Can we use your account? Can we use your account? Eh? Or uh, let me use admin. Uh, admin it's Anything? Oh, okay. It's a two, three. It must be machine of light two. Oh. Yeah. 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 Met eight one two three exclamation mark exclamation mark. the problem, but it's the same machine as well. Yeah, I see one.
six seven. Mm. Or we have to use another account. Do we have another account there? I've seen password to M. If it's not possible, we can switch to another, you can go to KMD. Is it, uh, you still, you're not able to log into that server? Yes, we are not able to log into, into it. You have forgotten the password or... or... Yeah, the Mavana and Temba have gone to look for the password. Hello? Hello. Hey. So meanwhile, uh, when you're looking for it, uh, we switch to KMD. When, you, when, you, when you're able to open it, you just uh, raise your hand. It's in Bafanus Lokanet. Capital letter L. Lokanet. Then A. Ubanjan. At then the password the accordance. You may one, two, three, eight. Okay. Okay, we are in now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, okay, now, uh, okay, let me take control. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. So now, uh, what we have been trying to do is to open this uh, the AW server, the one they are using, uh, so that we can see the data that is pulled, where it is pulled from, and the, how it is configured there. And the how it and the whole data it's receiving. So I go back to uh, to that system. Uh, so when we configure the FTP on this server, we when you configure FTP, you indicate uh, which path will be taken as the route. Uh, let's see. It was it. Uh, it was I think it was something. Uh, uh, Logan net was it cab it was cable the think logger net so now when you call when you configure the FTP from where the Kims of belonging in this the whole of this path was regarded as as the as the loot so that uh, when uh, uh, this one is I don't know that I can be switching back. I want to be switching back at one floor, so but uh, just from here. So from here, when we configure this server, the one that is, we have opened, which is uh, 192.168.128.167, we see that the input folder is root. So, but this this root for FTP working, the slash is face forward. But this route, this route is actually the is actually uh, this this path now. I don't know. I don't want to open the FTP configuration. But uh, when you install the FTP, you indicate uh, which path will be taken as the route, so that when you log into this into this server, you get straight there. And why they did this? This is where the the data files are. Uh, and I want to demonstrate with only one so that uh, things can go a bit faster. So, a uh, gentleman at uh, Eshwatini, I want to. Uh, so on the so this is a server. The root is that path you have seen. Uh, these are the passwords. So I I don't know why they were not, they were not using this one. This one is working also. Should be working FTP user, and then the password there. Then uh, this is what Creamsoft to use. So then they're using another account, but Creamsoft using this one. 
even this one would have worked if they draw if they draw using this one that is the ftp user and the password uh, although the part was is hidden and maybe they may not remember but these details are in cream soft you can retrieve them if you want them but what we are saying now for we have only one server for aws so all the sites are connected to this server so if i go to a certain site like this one uh, this one is called uh, maybe the, the reading are, 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 are a bit small so see can you read it for me this one is is which one it's in sali aws okay this Zali. one okay so now, okay, I get it. So the folder is in Campbell. So that means actually they are the FTP path was the logger net. Not uh, was was it? Uh, do you have the Campbell uh, uh, here again? Uh, because I can see the path is uh, the folder is called the Campbell. No, it's CrimSoft today. Oh, this is CrimSoft. CrimSoft, that what? means. Sorry, oh, okay. Wow. That means uh, this is the, this is the, Loganet is still the path. So I'm looking for the folder CrimSoft. Why that folder? Okay. okay, let me see whether it's somewhere somewhere in FTP or something. Sorry? It, it is C FTP root, something like that. Ah, uh, okay. So I I I'm looking for the FTP path. So how did we call it? We call it uh, from C. Yeah, I go to C. FTP. Yeah. This is C. In in it pub. In it pub. FTP. FTP root. FTP root. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I had missed because uh, we had done a lot of. So this is a path that was taken as the as the FTP root. So when we talk of path. Uh, in here, or when you are configuring that server, uh, the first we are looking for, they are located in the path, in the, that path from the root. And this root now starts for that folder, the one we are calling uh, the whole of this path now, init, init pub. Init pub, uh, that is FTP root. So now that we are, you see, like uh, this site. Um, like this site uh, I'm talking about, uh, this one, the file is called the uh, Saliti uh, Table Hour dot that, and it's the folder called CreamSoft. So these are folder called CreamSoft, uh, which is a subfolder of the root, and the root is now that one uh, we are seeing here. Uh, this is the root. So the the files would be found in CreamSoft, and the file is called uh, something. Silver, uh, uh, can you point to it? Okay, here it is. Can you see that now? Was, yeah, I can see it. It was last updated on second day. Is it is this second of December? Yeah, second December 2021 at 1100 hours. Okay, these files are, okay, these files are, are the ones that are generated uh, automatically. And that's what I said on my on my setting that the AW server uh, after setting the FTP 
uh, the FTP uh, configuration, there it was set, and the root of that of that FTP server was the the inlet inlet pub, then FTP root. Then the, that's where the files are, and those files are automatically exported. So this file, these files we are seeing here, they are automatically uh, uh, produced by the AWS uh, server itself. It has got a, a server which they call it. Uh, it has got a, a database which they call L L Loganet. As you can see here, so the Loganet, uh, this video is seeing called Loganet, is now the the server for this uh, AWS. That's the database. Rather, this is the database for this uh, AWS site, and it is storing the data that's coming from the site. So maybe see. Can you just list this? Can you just list, list uh, just list the site they are seen from the Loganet? Is it not possible? If it's not possible, we can continue. I beg your pardon, uh, Samuel. From this uh, Loganet window, can you just be able to see the list of the sites from here? Ah, uh, it's Bafana who can do that, you know. Okay, no problem. Let's leave, let's leave it. It's, it's not even important. But I, what, I, what I'm saying the, the, to the participant, this system, this is just a, uh, the, the, I, the menu for that server. And from it, uh, the, uh, okay, don't do it. I think it may take a bit of time. But it's got a database where it is storing data from the site. As now it's able to export uh, files automatically into the, into the FTP, uh, into the FTP root folder. And these are the files for different sites. Uh, when you look at the CleanSoft, they have configured uh, 20 sites. Uh, uh, and then uh, each of the each of the sites, the data for each of the sites has got a different uh, uh, file. So the, the the site we are seeing called uh, uh, then I think the name is Salite. So it's got a file. The data in it is called uh, Salite underscore table hour. And uh, if you look at that file, it's rather a big one. Uh, I better copy it outside here. Mm, copy. So I open it in a different, let me, let me go back to the cream soft server. Uh, I create a folder there. I just want to, to see this, what is in this folder. So I won't call them uh, Loganet, AWS underscore Loganet. I want to open it outside. I'm just, I'm just copying it to this folder. Paste. This, uh, and even copy it on my site so that I can be able to see it clearly. Uh, and I say this. Uh, let me copy on my site so that it can be clearly seen. I want to demonstrate something on that uh, on that server. Mm. What copy some I can remember. Go to Campbell. Come. No, just hold on. I hope it's not a big one. Okay. This is a, this is a file. I've just copied to my on my on my site so that we can uh, look at it. Uh, I want to I want to op to view it an editor. Let's see the, the data inside the the file. Let's open it. It will take all.
So this is the file that is uh, automatically generated by the database at the AWS uh, uh, server. And this is the file that CrimSoft will pick, it will pull at the frequency that uh, we have seen. This comma, this file is comma delimited. And it has been, uh, how that's a uh, log and the server, AWS server is configured is that uh, wherever you have got new data, uh, it is added into it the rust in the bottom of the of the of, of the records. I can see the last data was uh, on second. That is yesterday at uh, ten hour. I don't know the GMT or the rock hour. Uh, that means uh, this server, for some reasons, they have not been able to receive data since yesterday. So, gentlemen, at Shwatini, could there be a reason? Okay. They are yes. not. Uh... Hello? Sorry, Saman. I'm asking, uh, could you, could you uh, be having a reason why this data, you don't have the latest data? Because uh, I hope this site is still working. Because yeah, data we have is for yesterday at 10. Yeah, this data is for yesterday. Was it at 10? 11, it's not, oh, it's 11. No, it's uh, no. But yes, yeah, it, it, it is, uh, it was, uh, yesterday no. was second and the hour is 10. Oh, the hour is 10. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this maybe you are going to look uh, for it, but, uh, uh, here mm -hmm. we should be. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, okay, okay. Samuel, did you take this data from the clean software? You took it from the from the local it, server. I took it from local server. Yeah, it's not the clean software. Oh. I think they will they will investigate that. Uh, we will investigate, uh, but I just want to. Uh, okay, for demonstration, uh, what I want to to say that now, when you tell the cream soft to this, to the to, if it go to this file, and you tell it to, for example, the configuration at the team is that the the cream soft should uh, be retrieving data for the last two hours. So, like now, if it runs and try to locate this file. Uh, it 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 go, get into this file. It will be looking for the last for the last two hours from the current. So that means there's nothing it will pick from here, because uh, today is uh, that is that, and we are at uh, zero eight uh, about uh, almost uh, nine uh, GMT. So for the last two hours it it won't. But in the case now. You want to reach here, you have to count so many hours that uh, the difference, then you see that uh, uh, let it be captured. But likely this one was already captured because uh, uh, that uh, all that time Kimsoft has, has been running. So that's what I wanted to tell you. The other thing is that uh, uh, for you to configure such a file to be picked by the Kimsoft, you have to know the, 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 the nature of the columns. And uh, I will, to start with how we do it, we prefer, if this file is a CSV, you just rename it a CSV so that you can be able to see the, open it easily the Excel. 
we lose, but at the the the, the, the base station, it's not it's not named it's not renamed it because the Creamsoft will be looking for the extension uh, that. But when you are configuring, you need to open the file in a way that you can uh, be able to see things well. So at the site, that file has got a dot dot dot. So if you name it at the base station, uh, something else, it will not be seen because Creamsoft will copy that it can't see that file. But when you are configuring how that to be read, you need to explain uh, how the columns are uh, data that they contain. So for here now, if I open it uh, through the Excel, I can be able to see that so that I can define the columns, what they represent. And then I save that, uh, that configuration in the CreamSoft under what we call the, the data structures. This, and you give it a name. Okay, now you see this, this is the data. It has got, uh, I'm going to count the columns. Mm. For me to be able to count well, let me uh, put uh, another line on the top. Uh, let's see the, how many columns are there. Column one. I'm just putting them for the sake of knowing uh, what columns are there. So there are 69 columns. Uh, to start with, when you are configuring uh, how this data will be uh, read automatically, the CreamSoft, you have to go through the, nine, the 69 columns and, and describe them. It's a, it's a bit of a task, but uh, you do it only once at the CreamSoft now. Anytime it's reading this file, it will be looking for this, uh, for this structure. And when uh, the gentleman at Eshwatini, when they were doing it, Let's see how the what they got. So, what did we call that uh, that uh, configuration, gentlemen? Sive or Bafana? Let me check if, if it's this one. They are not here. Uh, I can't see. I can't hear them. It's not this one because that one was. Uh, these are different ones. We always give you the example of others so that you can be able to follow. So actually it's, it's this one. Gentlemen from my short team, who can hear me? Uh, they can't hear me. I you hope I'm heard by, by anybody else. We are hearing you, Mr. Machua. But uh, the we are here, thank you, Mr. Machua. Eshwatin, they are not responding to me. Is there anybody from Eshwatin who can hear? Yeah, me? we are here, but uh, we had a problem. It had to kick us out of the meeting. Okay. I just read it now. Yeah, I'm wondering so that uh, when I'm demonstrating your system, uh, so I'm looking at uh, how you you set up uh, the files. You disturb the files, uh, uh, now they can be read. Women Sorry. Is there anybody with a question? Okay. Women uh, can you repeat the question? Okay. There's some, some sound in the background there. I, I, I don't know whether somebody has not uh, muted the, the mic. Uh, then, then they shall explain you brought the yeah. lack of flexibility. I think yeah, it's... I think it's peace. Peace. peace, can you mute? Yeah. Uh, can you okay, repeat the question now? Okay, I've gone over it. The, the question was that uh, I wanted to locate the, the structure for your company of files. 
I wanted to know the name because I was not sure about the name, but I was able to locate it because you have got so many structure for different uh, types of files. But for the Campbell, uh, I've located it. I think it's this one because I, I did nice. the file and counted the columns. I found there are 69. And when, yes. we config, when you configured them, uh, you named them uh, 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 SC Campbell WS underscore Anglo. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it's the one. Then uh, we look at uh, yeah, you configured yeah. you configured the uh, uh, sixty nine row co columns. Each row on this structure describe the the column. So there are sixty nine columns. Yes. The columns that have got uh, data to be to be gested is given a CreamSoft element code. Let's say like yeah. starting the co column number one, this one is, does not go to CreamSoft, but tell us the, this is the column with the date and time. If you look okay. at the data, the first column is the date and time. The second column, I think this is the record number. That system of, of AWS is even outputting the record number. I don't know. I don't know why it's counting the reference point. So the second column is is the is the record number. I think. I think yes. the column now, which has got data to be uh, to be taken, is column number seven. seven and this yeah. is this could be let's see, could be such and something or sky radiation. So you had the column on uh, column seven. You configured the this is the I think this could be re, the radiation the width speed yeah, it's solar, solar radiation column number seven is it solar radiation yeah solar yes. radiation okay but this one is a uh, width speed width speed the, up RH is a uh, column number eight that one is the width speed so the one I'm seeing on the on your structure, unless I'm looking at the wrong one, is that column number seven is sunshine, or maybe you're looking at the different structure. Let's, no, let's uh, this one, this structure is for acro. Okay, let's see. Let's see the structure that you have on the site. It is called. Uh, okay, okay. So I've copied the wrong file. Yeah. Which which which? Okay, this is for acro. This, this is for Acro Meteorological Station, this one, the, the, the Campbell uh, AWS underscore Acro. But that's one is that they connected to the site. Is it the only one that is connected? I think there are two. But the one that the one that site is connected is, is the Angro. I think there are two somewhere because we have 20 stations. 10 are from Acro Med Station and the other are just climate stations. Okay. Okay. I, I yes. was looking at the, the Agro one. Yes. There's, a, there's a Agro one and Agro and Angro. So the first one, this one for Sarite is Angro. Yeah, Agro, this one. Then uh, yeah, then there's a Cabello AWS one. Yes. Like the, so Cabello AWS one, if I look at the structures, is uh, Campbell AWS one is the one I'm looking at. So maybe the one that we are looking at is, is the Angro. Hello? Yeah, the last one. Okay. Yeah. This is the one that the, the, the file is under this. It's also 69 columns. So column number data starts at column number five. Column number five is the speed. So for the one for the angle, this is angle is the one that uh, this data is connected to. And the, the, the data is. Uh, A table hour, that's the one I've copied. So when I look at, uh, yeah, column number five, 
in the mid speed. Uh, this one. So actually, that, that's the that's the right uh, structure. So you call it a. Uh, uh, we saved it at, at, at the angle. So the data starts column number five. Column number seven is also with speed. So it goes column number eleven is skipped because you don't want to take it for some reasons because that data you may not need it. That is column number eleven. This is something that is uh, does not make relevant for your archiving. So you went like that uh, until the last column with the with the data is column number sixty one. Uh, sixty one. So this one you you took it. I don't know. It's uh, 61, mm. this one you, you, you did uh, capture it, 61, and the element code is, uh, which one is this? This number what? This is one. number 969. Nine, nine, 969, nine, yes. So, so if you look at the metadata, we see all this uh, element code must be in the, in the metadata. So you look at, at the metadata, that means you are capturing uh, that nine, is nine, nine, six, nine. Nine, nine, six, nine. Uh, is something magnetic or something. Uh, so that's uh, the average biological conductivity at depth of uh, one, one what? Let me see. One, oh, I mean, hundred centimeters. <laughs> so the point here, this uh, like this uh, element, this one we don't even supply when we are given cream soft. So, but you have you have a data that you want to store on this. So this one they created it, the on the top of the existing LMS metadata. So you created it. Uh, uh, it he has a scale, but no, but no limits. But uh, these limits and the limited data may not uh, may, may, be, may be overruled by the one they have on the on the sites on the sites because every element you configure on at any column you also put the the limit. So here, unfortunately, they have not put. So he, any data for this one, it will be taken in. But uh, probably some others, they, they have put the one that they, they are aware. Sometimes you don't know, you, you are not sure what, what extreme that you expect. So you don't have to put. So let's say like uh, some like, uh, this is a uh, temperature of, of a kite. He has put the limit as a, uh, minus 10 lowest and 35 is the highest. The temperature, this one uh, on column uh, column 12, they put the, the limit as uh, minus 10 minus at the 46. On this one, because this data is going straight to the observation final, you don't put the, you put exactly as it is because if you compare this data now, like the data in column 12, uh, will, uh, it will be again, this is the data now. It, the cream soap you're leading these values and they compare them with the limit under the column uh, 12. That's uh, now between 40, column 12 is uh, the lowest is uh, 40 no the lowest is minus 10 and has 46 so in of this value that is below minus 10 or above minus 46 will not be taken into the database the rest will be will be taken but that one will be put aside and there will be an error an error message file and you be sure you have that file is put 
so the point I'm trying to uh, to put here is that uh, uh, from the AWS server side, the first thing you, you indicate which is the which is the path for the FTP, and now in our case, the file is this is the FTP, FTP path, and now the data that are going to be located are in the, you have to indicate uh, anything on top of the root, you will be indicating which folder. That's why the configuration was that uh, uh, on the server, we shall be starting from the root, and from the root trace, we can be able to locate the data, and then uh, for every given uh, uh, file, you can see we're having CreamSoft as the folder on top of the root, and then we read the files. So the CreamSoft will be able to locate uh, these files uh, because the moment the CreamSoft logs into that server, it will go to this to this uh, path, and now it will start uh, reading the uh, uh, the files according to the sites that are configured. Okay, uh, now that's about the the data structures, and I don't know. There's no. You have not started sending to GTS, isn't it? I can't see any any site that is connected to GTS. Is there any? Yeah, I can see this one. Uh, let me. Are there? There are only a few that uh, send okay. to GTS. Okay. Can you can you select one? Just scroll. Ah, uh, it's like okay. I'd seen one. Okay, let me check. Just hold on, I do it myself. I'd seen one, yeah, that one. You see this, this one. one, yeah. So this one is wherever the cream soft will be encoding the data for this station and they set it to GTS onto this uh, server now. Uh, this is the message to server. Uh, and it will be taken as binary. And, the, and the, then it will be, it will be transmitted to GTS because this is the message switch. The one which we are seeing here now. This is uh, 192, 168, something, and 66. So, so for that, for that, for such a site, when data when, it, when the cream soft is selected data for that site, when it's processing, it will go into two ways. Uh, the data will go to cream soft database, and the same data will be processed for for GTS, and it will to be put there. Uh, okay. So the others, like this one, this one I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, this site now, this nothing will be done because it is it has because it's operation. Seems of just keep it. That one is not operational. Yeah. So I think there are about a few that are connected to the GTS. Yeah, this another one. Uh, number. That team. Then, uh, when it will be doing the, the data for GTS, it will be according them according to the settings that we have here. They will be given this. It will be called a code according to, to this double mode template. Template meaning it has got a list of the observations that should be encoded in a certain order. And then uh, this will be the header because the uh, cream sort packaging, everything, the message tree should just be forwarding. The, the, the message you'll be having this header. And then the other thing that uh, this is center for uh, Babane. Babane is originating data for this. So 
I think this number is 002, is it 287? Uh, okay, the screen is a bit small. It's, uh, it's, it's what? It's, it's 00287. Yeah, that's the, that's the, center that's the data for that's the originating center for this data they, ha they have a they have a double more code for that originating center and i think i give them a file from where you can uh, you can check at the uh, at anybody else that will be setting up i'll uh, let me get that file from the uh, from from uh w more or they may uh, they may request I can uh, because I, I I have a copy of that uh, that table called the uh, common. This is uh, I, I can't remember the name, but it's called something com common common table. Uh, this one common table. I blame more common table. Uh, I'm not sure this one, but uh, you can always get it and be able to find out uh, which is the code for your center. This one. Uh, for example, here, if I search for, unfortunately, it's the Swatini is still called the Swaziland. So they have not. Uh, yeah. So Swaziland. Whether that is still the same. The, I don't think it has been updated. I'm just searching for to see whether I can get the. Not Swaziland. Swaziland. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Swaziland. So Swaziland, that's the number. So use it uh, five digits. This is the this is the original center for messages. So if Sudan, if the Sudan were configuring, if Sarah was configuring, it would give that uh, that number for uh, for Swaziland for for Kat, for now for Khartoum. That means. Uh, that's why that number for Nairobi is uh, 14, I think. So the rest you, you remain, it remains as, as a default, but this number should go according to the country. Uh, you can use this document or you can download it from WMO. It's called uh, the file is called uh, WMO 306, volume two, common table. It lists uh, all the meteorological centers and their their, their code for, uh, for for data transmission. So this one I close and to adjust there for demonstration. So the other thing I want to maybe farm. So the most difficult part of this are the data structures because. You have to take the pain of defining each and every each and every column because uh, uh, Climsoft has to know to what to do with this column, and you configure it uh, 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 correctly. Uh, so, when you create a new structure, like if I say, okay, if I open a fresh on the on the data structures. Let me close and uh, okay. Let's uh, let not demonstrate from their from their computer because it's running. If I do from my side, this is my side now. If I do data structures servers and I want uh, data structures, if I type uh, a new a new structure here, let me start afresh. Okay, I am still on my site on AWS. I go to data structures. 
if I want to, I'm putting a, a new structure, I'll type the name uh, and I can call it testing. Testing, the testing uh, structure, STR. Then I'll have to indicate uh, the limiters for this file. Like this one, we found it's comma delimited. If it's for this one, I'll uh, indicate that the, this file is comma delimited or any other, if it's not other, I put it. Then I will put the number of rows on top of the data. For this one, uh, we have, uh, I mean, don't, don't call this one, I just put it myself for the sake of it. So there are how many? Uh, one, two, three, four. So this, if I was getting this one, I'll indicate that uh, I have uh, four rows on top of the data so that when it comes to, come to this file, uh, it will be skipping the first four rows. And then, uh, then I check, uh, is there a character that is, is uh, qualifying what you call uh, the character string? So this one you check by doing this. Yeah. I, uh, I have that file. You opening it with the text. Let me go back the same. Mm. We need to see this character they are hidden by Excel, but uh, if I edit it to see the file inside, I will see uh, a string like a date and time, it is put between quotes. So anything that is a string here, this system is putting as a, as a other quotes, but numbers, no. You can see like this uh, observation doesn't have that uh, quotes, but some like this one has got quotes. So for Clipsoft to be not be bothered about these characters, you indicate as, uh, uh, as you put it here. So it has that character, which now is not a part of data. It happened most of the systems, they try to, to protect the, the strings so that they're not interfered with by some other systems. Like Excel, sometimes it's a good habit of uh, uh, changing the dates. So, but when you put your data in strings, it will not interfere, it, it will take the way it is. But uh, if not, it will put the dates according to its format. So some system to protect data from being distorted by other systems, uh, the one that is likely to be distorted mainly is the date, so it puts under the under the quotes. But now, when it comes to leading this data, not only this but other data where, where there is a a quote is supposed to throw it away, but you have to tell it what what is being used. So after providing this information, in the time now you see that uh, you create a you create a a, a structure you call testing as a string, and then when you click on this on the on that one you get a measure that that now this structure has been created it's upon you to now to describe your data and you start uh, by putting columns column number one and they give its description if it's about a uh, date uh, date and time uh, you put it and then uh, you got, get other details go to the next column this uh, this uh, this uh, kind of uh, <coughs> uh, preparations uh, here you can see there is no save button, but it saves things as you go. So in case you make a mistake, you just go back and correct. So anything that uh, the moment you go to the following line, the previous line is uh, is already saved. Uh, so like if now. I, I close. If I open uh, that, that uh, plus again, I go to structures. So here be a list, or a list of all the structures that have been created. So I see whether mine is there. So there's testing. This one I created. 
Okay, I think it's, it is not uh, recognized what I've done so far, but uh, when you open it, you continue. If something was not uh, saved for some reason, uh, you, you repeat it. I won't see why it's not saving. So two, I need the DD, gray, test testing. So, sites. So there's something duplicates. So, so the structures. So it is there. Testing. So now it has taken. So you call, you copy and giving all the details, and you don't have to do it in one time. You can continue, especially if the columns, if the data columns are many. So that's what happened to Eshwatini. The they created the uh, uh, those structures. They had two types of. Uh, two types of uh, files with the different, uh, some sites had a different uh, data, the different, different columns, and another one, the different columns. And that's why they had to come up with the two structures. That's, you, that's why you find that uh, there are sites, uh, some of them, like this, the first one has got a structure called the uh, SC, Kabel, AWS, Angro. But as we continue, we find that, uh, they are another one called the Campbell AWS because this, this station, the data for this station is coming with a different structure. So within the same site, within the same set of AWS, you can have different sites coming, data coming with different types of columns. And then uh, you need to set, to describe that. And then uh, what you'll be doing that uh, when you're adding a new, a new site, you connect to the right structure. So when you connect, when you select here, you'll be seeing all the structures that are, are there. There are some that we provide them to you as a sample, and there are some that uh, you have created. Like now, this uh, short they have created two, two structures. You have to know the names. And then that is what now Crimsoft will be, will be, will be doing to, to process your data. So now, uh, for now, for Shwatin, you can see they are somehow their processing stopped uh, yes, yesterday. And now, the although hand. Kim, sorry, there is the hand. Yeah, Mark. Mark, welcome. Hello. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, this is Susan. Okay. Um, I just wanted to inform you that we we shall have the closing remarks at uh, five to one. That is Kenyan time. That is in half an hour. After twenty five minutes time, uh, we, we're not able to have it at three o'clock as we had anticipated. So once uh, Mark makes the closing remarks, then we can break for lunch and come back and finish the rest of the program. So in 25 minutes time, uh, we shall we, we shall we shall have that close official closing. Okay, thank you, Susan. That means uh, uh, to five. They're saying five, 10 minutes to one. Is it ten minutes or five minutes to one? Five minutes to one. Okay, so that means uh, we we shall add. Uh, this session, uh, no, whatever you are doing, we shall we shall stop at uh, five minutes to one. We have closing remarks. Then uh, we shall see whether to continue after lunch. At the, so, but I think we shall continue after lunch so that we can conclude our, our our training. We need to summarize and work on the way forward. So, at five minutes to one, we shall have uh, closing remarks from from Mark, and then we break for lunch. Then we resume at at two and we continue so that we can be able to conclude and especially decide on the way forward and, and they also try to see how whoever wants to join the Climsoft community can be sharing the feedback 
Masterini will direct will show you on how to get registered in our Creamsoft online forum. Okay, thank you, Susan. So now we continue uh, from what we are doing. We are still, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are still seeing on how you can uh, do the configuration of the Creamsoft. Most of the configurations done within the Creamsoft server, and that's what we are doing. Uh, the only configuration that is done outside the Creamsoft is going to the particular AWS server. Make sure that the uh, FTP site, the uh, FTP server is configured, and there is a path for FTP, and that will be taken as the route. And that the, that the, that's the path where the AWS uh, uh, server will be putting the files. These files, uh, uh, they should be automated, out, uh, they should be updated automatically. And you set the Creamsoft interval, which it will be going there. So now what we are looking at, uh, we look at the, on the diagram that we have, we look at the server details, we look at the message that is the uh, AWS server details, we look at the message switch details, we have looked at the uh, site details, and you have seen where we said the frequencies at which data will be acquired. For example, in the Swatin, they are doing it uh, every one hour. Uh, then uh, for every site, there is a data structure for the file that contains the data, and they use, you give that information to the Creamsoft, and that's exactly what we are doing now. On the message encoding forms, that one I've just touched it, and I've shown how you, you select the right uh, template and you also indicate the center number and you also put the, the header that goes the messages. So for the header, you get from your GTS uh, managers in your country. They know the headers for the messages and that's what you are going to put. So now the most important part of this is the data structure because what we are looking for is the data that is the data that is in this file so we have to point creamsoft to the right column and match it with the the relevant element code if you don't have it the creamsoft metadata you create it and you define it and then it will be that way the data will be put in your in your systems and uh, the other thing I want to mention in the structure also, uh, you, we still continue this one of the, let's say the other one, which is called the Campbell, uh, not the Anglo. Let's see, Campbell uh, AWS one. This, uh, this is the other column. I've talked the column of the Creamsoft element codes. There's, there's a very important column we call date and time. This is the one that uh, helps Creamsoft to know exactly this data is for which. So this column is very important because if it's done, if it's not done nicely, the data will be misplaced. And there is a uh, the rest of the the rest of the columns you can label them in whole in the Crimson structure, but the the columns on the the columns on the data strat on the on the date time, it's got some uh, uh, definite uh, definition that Crimson require that you you go about them, and I think it's better mention that. Let me go to the manual. And I see how you define that columns. Mm. So I go to the chapter on the AWS real time uh, configuration. I think it's on the. This is to give them coding. Yeah, this one, chapter 11, page 6. So here, 
you will be able to know how to go about this configuration. I'm going through them. I was going through them from the from the practical side, but now yourself you take time to read this uh, manual. Uh, and the, the one that is most uh, critical is the one on the data structure. Uh, data structures is really important because the, you may configure anything else correct, but here you configure it wrong and the data will not be ex extracted well or it might be misplaced. So the others, the other configuration are just straightforward, but this one is requires a bit of understanding. And uh, we see the, the, the first column on a, not, not inside the first, because it depends on your data. It might be somewhere else. It may not be the first one, but uh, you have to configure it this way. And the different systems, they have the, the date and time represented, represented differently. And uh, it's likely that you can have different, uh, different date and time structures. Uh, and these are the possible ones. Mm. If you got the manual, the one you are looking at, this data has got the data, data and time structure of the that is uh, of the of this one. You have the 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 year. You have got the day, month, and the year. They can be of any order. Like here, we are seeing it is like uh, it is. We are starting with the year. So, so long as is the you have got data, date, year and month separate from the and together with the time and separated by a space, you qualify to use this uh, this header here. So this will be the header for that uh, for that column, the first co the column that's got date and time. But you can have uh, it in different columns. You can have date, different column, time and different columns. You, you name them this way. You can have, uh, sometimes you can have about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can have such, such a column whereby you have got the year, month, day, hour, minutes and seconds separately, different columns. Sometimes you can have one column of date and time, but the date is uh, it's all combined. So whatever is bolded here is how you name uh, uh, those columns, like I think uh, one of the most complicated one was from uh, Na Mozambique. Uh, no. Their data was, I don't know that I've got an example of uh, AWS. So let me test. Let me try so that I can open one of the, 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 the files. Yeah, this is one of the most complicated one. You have the, uh, if I just add another column here, this is the, this is the year, this is the month, this is the I think this is a day. Probably this could be the uh, day, hour, and then this could be this. Yeah, yeah, this could be the hour. Which, which is, they were not even in it in, in, in any order. But uh, such a case where you have got even the um, this is hour, this could be the minutes. This could be the this could be the minutes. I like putting in into different from the month, and this could be the seconds. So that's an example of a very com complicated uh, date and time. So when you have it that way, you have to each each of them will come as a separate column in the data structure, and then uh, each column you give the column for the for the hour. You give it each each the column for the for the the column for the minutes you give it uh, like that 
So uh, now, uh, the goodness with this one, we have given, uh, because we know that is a complicated uh, configuration, we have given you detailed manual on, uh, on how to do everything. So when you come to this, you try to follow the manual and also consult us where you have uh, difficulties uh, because uh, things have to be right. And when it is done right, the, the data will be well, uh, it will be done quite well and the, the things will be going automatically according to what is configured there. So if I go back to Eshwatini, uh, I want to now uh, switch off from Eshwatini. I just demoed something from the Kenya Meteorological Department. So for them, uh, when you want to start now, the Climsoft will go through the site so long as, uh, as they are ticked. But what I note from Eshwatini, the files are, are big because they don't delete them. Some users would like to, to delete them uh, manually. And they have, uh, uh, what we recommend is that, uh, like for a case for Eshwatini, uh, these files, you can, uh, You can make them. You can make up when you know that they are all been been uh, been uh, processed by Creamsoft. You make a backup of them, then you delete them, and then uh, the your system should be able to create a, to create a new one. So you start from small files. Small files go faster uh, because uh, I'm just going to because the Creamsoft will have to go through the whole the whole file uh, from the bottom from the top to bottom looking for the latest data. So it takes time to go through the, the whole file because it goes through the whole file, looking at the time and see whether this data is, is according to what is configured. And these files, they are text files. It's unlikely we can be able to index them because they call them flat files. So it's good that you have small files. You can read them yourself. You make a backup of them and then you start from uh, smaller files. Because uh, as you can see now, when we when I restart the process, you see it takes a bit of time. Although now this one, mm, okay, I'm trying to sorry, not to this. So here uh, we can now restart the process. We had stopped it because we are doing the demonstration. If you wanted to start, we just uh, click on the restart and. Creamsoft will start now looking for those files and working on the records. You can see on the status how it is uh, it's indicating which record is, is hardening. And according to that file, there are about uh, 2,000. Okay, it has finished that file to go to the next one. And then uh, this one is now is a big one, 2,000 and that nine. No, it's still 20,000 or something. Yeah, it's, now it's at 462. So it will go through all those files that have been taken as operation, taking the data into, into, into Creamsoft. And you can check uh, what data has been taken there. You usually, usually leave this, this while learning at the server and you, so that it not be stopped somehow. And then uh, yourself, you can be uh, operating the Crimson from uh, a desktop. So here on this side, on the input file, it keep uh, putting the file that the one that it has, it has processed, and it will now when it has finished, that it will be in a waiting status, waiting for the next hour. To do the to the to do the uh, processing. Uh, when it's doing that, uh, but you can still 
still retrieve the data using the normal normal cream soft uh, sample but i would like to it's better we could have done from the other side, from another desktop so that this uh, this cream soft nose installed it's not uh, I want, it's not uh, interfered with. Let's, wanted... let's stop, let's stop it, the, the process uh, somewhere. It will, it will work. No, I just wanted to, we... to see, just, just hold on. I want to see whether I can use the, don't stop it first. I want to see okay. whether I can get the other menu. Uh, I want to see that I can minimize it uh, because you can, when it's still processing, you can, uh, you can still access database, but uh, if that means uh, you work for, you do it from another computer because when it's really busy it's unlikely that uh, you can agree to minimize this menu to see the other one so okay you can okay. stop yeah, just kill it so that we demonstrate uh, something uh, but we leave this at the server edge then from the desktop you can uh, access the Climsoft database and then uh, can you log to the Climsoft So you can try to see the data that you have been receiving through the product. Uh, this one is uh, US is hourly, so we hourly is, is okay. So we go to hourly. Uh, so just select the station like they just uh, see them. You can select a few stations if you know their, their names, especially the one we are looking at. Which one is the, can we select? The one that we look at, it was called the Sa, Sarich. Sarich. Mm. Mbabani is Mbabani way. Mbabani, this one. Yeah, it's Mbabani, AWS. Okay, let's look at uh, two enough. And salute. Okay, so right now, I uh, just want to check on two. I want to check on the on the element that I know. Let's look for the temperature. I, I know the temperature you have. Uh, you have. You have. Uh, it's, it's, it's among them, and the rainfall, for which is eight ninety two, and maybe pressure, which is uh, eight eighty four. I think those are now. Let's check for data uh, from uh, the whole of yesterday. From yesterday. Which Mistake. was uh, yesterday? That is uh, December, December, oh. December second. So that's uh, the the first one. I want it to be December twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one, and uh, from uh, second, second, which is two. Uh, now we can do it up to today, and this one. We do, we extract. Okay, this computer doesn't have Excel, so it cannot open in Excel. But uh, this file, yes, uh, it's open in Notepad because there's no Excel. We have data for two stations. The data we have is, uh, I wish you can call this comp. Uh, okay. We can see it uh, clearly, but uh, I can copy this computer, this data in my computer. Then we can view it. So whenever you do a data extraction, the information goes to folder called. Uh, before you save it yourself in another location, it goes to where you saw CreamSoft, the path of Creams. No, no, it goes to program data. Then the CreamSoft before then the data this is why Kimsoft keeps data temporarily and now i can have this file uh, copy it into my computer so that you can see it because my computer there is excel in the server that's why it's not good to be working from the server because it's uh, it will be 
misleading. You'll be, you'll be making it do things that doesn't, which are not good. Probably there will be no Excel to see the data well. So I want to copy it here, that file. We see what we have extracted. So I can open an Excel here. So for that station, for yesterday, we have data for our eight, our nine and our 10. Our 10 is, our nine is also missing. We have to, for, we, it's able to, yesterday that was, no, uh, even today, today we have some data at 10, uh, but it is seems if yesterday it is stopped at our eight. So what you do, in, what you, when you, what you do in such cases, when you know, you know that there are some gaps, we try to retrieve all the data now. We, we tell the CRIMSOFT to capture the, you can push CRIMSOFT to now to, when that process, you can tell it to go for more hours, even like 48 hours, to go for the last two days, so that it can fill the gaps. Because I can see now, from eight yesterday, the next data is today at 10. And then we have the temperature, uh, precipitation which is zero and the pressure which is uh, like now the latest is 97. Uh, uh, we've been having that problem. Hello? Hello? Yeah, we've been facing, we've been having that problem ever since we installed Teamsoft. I don't know what's the problem. So if that has been skipped, uh, maybe it's because of the this hour, uh, you are trying to receive for the, for the last two hours, but now data comes far much late. By the time you keep soft running, the data is about five five hours old. So that data is skipped. So the issue is that uh, to fill the gaps, you can put more hours or you can put a 999 and you run it to, if you put 999, it will capture everything. Even because it, it will read the whole file. I tried to get that that was not. But the moment is, but in usual when you have two hours, it will be reading only there for the last uh, two hours. And uh, if your system has been stopping now and then, some data will be skipped. So it's, a, it's good to be checking what you have and you see how much has been skipped. Then you can repeat the process and you indicate uh, more hours or, or maybe triple nine to capture anything from the beginning of that file to the last. In that case, you fill the gaps. So because uh, the moment you say a of test to capture for the last two hours, in even one hour, it will be captured for the last two hours compared to, to at that time. So if some data was left behind for some hours, and it comes maybe five hours late, then the, the, the old data may be not captured. So the issue is that uh, if you see there are gaps, at one time you set the cream sort to run for everything. That means triple nine, and then it will capture all the data. It may take longer because there are more data, but uh, you can leave it running overnight and it will capture all the data. So maybe you can try today, leave it uh, overnight and it captures all the data. We, then, we you take have one to, hand. then you take it back to the... Uh, to that. Bekele has so, raised his hand. Yeah, letter Bekele. And not now, we are, we are almost at time to yes. return to Mark, but let's, ta let's take this question. Okay. Uh, my question is, <clears throat> this uh, Klimsoft uh, uh, read all uh, AWS formats, maybe different countries produce uh, this instrument in, uh, and uh, the system of uh, coming, the data is format is different. How to manage in this in, on CleanSoft? Is the you configure that format in the CleanSoft? I don't know. I don't know the for, what format you are talking about. Uh, what uh, you mean by the or what do you mean by the format? When we extracted a different format and uh, just uh, like, programming like, different programming. Can you like uh, can you give us an example of, of one format? You are referring to according to our uh, aws uh, we have three types of aws yes one 
uh, it's different projects installed. One in Korean's AWS is installed uh, Jubex, Jubex, and uh, the, the other is Adcon. And uh, what I don't know, huh? Visor. Yeah, the, the third one yeah. is Visor. How to manage on this? You each of them they have a uh, they have their own uh, base station, so you configure you configure the server for each in Climsoft. Uh, you have to pick, configure the IP for every server for each of the the types, and then uh, then you start configuring the the data from the site. So that so that so that so that a given site will be indicated to come from this server because. Uh -huh. uh, for every site you are configuring, you point to the right server. In oh. Rwanda, we have even more. I think you have got even five, okay. and they, they, they are able to connect them. So you'll be able to, to, to put the details for each server in okay. Creamsoft. And mm -hmm. when you consider a certain site, you throw the Creamsoft, this site is under this server. So the Creamsoft will get data for that site. First of all, it will log into that server and look mm -hmm. for that file. Okay. So, you will not be able to do that, but uh, what I is what I advise on this, just try to read the manual, and okay. when you want to do it, just okay. contact just contact us. We can do it together with you because for the first time it might be a bit uh, complicated for you. Okay. Okay.